Listen, there's one thing that a lot of you guys are doing for your camping, backpacking, and hiking trips that you really need to stop doing. Why? Because it doesn't really matter for most of you. Hey, yo, Chef Corso, I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks. And we are here, man, look at this. This is the Great Salt Lake. I'm here in Antelope State Park, just outside of Salt Lake City. A beautiful afternoon. Man, we had a whole bunch of thunderstorms the last couple days, but sun is out, feeling good. So what is this one thing that a lot of you guys are doing that you probably need to stop doing? Well, it's calorie counting. Yeah, most of you out there don't need to calorie count. Why? Because you're not crushing 20 plus miles a day. You're going for a one to three, four night backpacking trip. And you really just need to eat real food and eat food and you're probably going to be fine. As you know, I am a big fan of taking real fresh ingredients, throwing away your packaged meals, and doing that will go a long way into providing a great meal plan, a lasting experience, and you don't have to calorie count. Well, great, Corso. Thanks for that. Well, if I'm not going to focus on a number and not going to calorie count, then how do I make a meal plan that's going to satisfy me, that's going to refuel me, and to keep me going for a m multiple days on the trail? Well, stay tuned because I've got a couple quick tips that we're going to go over right by the lake here that will help out this whole process. So you're not just focusing on a number and you have really great tasty meals along the way. One quick caveat before we get into this is I am not a nutritionist. I'm a chef. I like to cook food outside. So if you do have a specific dietary restriction that you have specific needs for your belly and your body, please be mindful of that. You may have some different needs than the general public out there. If you do have a specific dietary restriction, I'll put a couple links in below that are some great backpacking nutritionists because again, I am not a nutritionist. And another thing, if you are a long haul through hiker, you're going out for seven plus days, you're on the PCT, you're on the AT right now and you're watching me in your tent, one, thanks. But you do need to be a little bit more mindful about how much food you are putting in your body. But my argument is that if you do eat with real ingredients, cook fresh, tasty meals for most of your meals on the trail, then you don't need to focus as much on a whole number. But again, you do you. If you know you need 6,000 calories every day because you're charging 25 miles, then fantastic. But maybe I can give you a couple quick tips that'll elevate some of your bowls and keep you satisfied along the way. And here's another thing that may surprise some of you out there. I have never, ever calorie counted for one of my backpacking trips. All the trips into the Olympic National Park, North Cascades, California trips, all of these trips, I have never focused on a number. I focus on flavor. I focus on variety. I focus on texture and freshness because those things are extremely important to providing really satiating, exciting meals for your trip. So yeah, I don't ever, ever focus on a number. So one of the great part about these videos is that, you know, I can just be sitting in the grass looking at the Salt Lake right here. And it's pretty, pretty darn nice to get, get to talk to you guys about cooking and cooking outdoors. And also, I forgot my tripod today. So the camera right here is just propped up on a rock. So forgive me if it's a little cockeyed, but uh, I'm trying to get this video in before uh, some buffalo and bison come in, uh, come and get me. And hopefully I'm not sitting in some of their shit. <laughs> So my first suggestion for you guys is find a baseline. And a lot of nutritionists will out, out there will, will tell you to find a baseline for overall calories. You know, you can write it down over a couple days before you go, but my suggestion is find a baseline of when you eat and how you eat. For example, for me, I barely eat breakfast. I just am not hungry until like 9, 10, or 11 o'clock. And I have a flexible schedule so I can eat when I want. But maybe you are super hungry bear in the morning and you need breakfast like right after your morning shower. Or uh, you love eating lunch. You know, I dinner is my favorite meal of the day. So I kind of like budget to later because that's more exciting for me, but find a baseline on how you generally eat. Also, are you snacking a whole bunch during the day? Because most likely, unless it's some sort of crazy bonkers trip, is you're going to be eating pretty similar on the trail. Sometimes we think it's going to be so, so different, but you know what? It is 24 hours. You're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks, and it's going to be pretty similar to how you're normally eating. Another great positive about finding a baseline is when you do go out there, your system will stay a little bit more regular and you might need a few more snacks here and there, but most likely you're going to be fine.
Another reason why not just to focus on a number is that real food refuels in a better way. It also tastes a whole lot better. But a lot of these packaged meals are created to be high calorie and filling, but the other thing about them is they usually have a lot of salt and a lot of preservatives. And yes, if you are sweating on the trail, you do need to replenish your salt, but there is so much salt and so many preservatives in over multiple meals and multiple days on the trail, it can really affect your belly and overall be not that satisfying. And if all that you're eating is food out of a bag and trail mix, you're gonna have a bad time. And you know, if you're French fried when you shoot a pizza, you're also gonna have a bad time. As we're headed down the path here of not calorie counting, the other thing that I've noticed about the packaged meals and just focusing on a number is that means you aren't necessarily satisfied. Sure, you might have calories and you might have a full belly at the end of the night, but the thing about a lot of the meals is that they are high in carbs and they're not really that complex. What I mean by complex is that your meals for any meal plan should be very diverse in fat, fiber, protein, carbs, salt, and hydration. It's another really important thing to consider here as you're, you're creating a, a satisfied meal plan is to be hydrated and stay satisfied in your belly there. Other things to think about as far as a complex meal plan is texture, freshness, variety, diversity. I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily want to eat ramen for four days in a row, but I do like eating ramen maybe for one or two and then having some instant mashed potatoes, some instant rice. But even with those pantry ingredients, I like to change it up as far as the spice mixes that I'm adding, whether that's Mexican, Indian, Thai, Japanese, all that kind of stuff where having a diverse, complex meal plan is not only good for your belly, it's also good for your mind. Think diversity in texture, flavor, and ingredients is often overlooked. And I know some of you out there are looking at me like, hey, Corso, it's fine. I can eat 12 days of Nature Valley granola bars and I am totally great. Well, good for you. Again, you do you. But for me, that sounds absolutely terrible. I want flavor, texture, interesting things to come, and I wanna be excited for my meal at the end of the night. Quick interjection on car camping. I know we're talking about backpacking and hiking meals, but this is something that I am guilty of, and I know you are guilty of, but why do we all pack so much food when we're car camping? We have like four coolers of stuff for like a two or three night backpacking trip. We think there's no food available in the town that we're going to, and all we're really doing is sitting by a fire and drinking beer. So. I don't know, maybe consider next time taking a little bit less food. Sure, the kids do need their snacks, but you know, if you're going with the family too, maybe have them take one night for dinner, you take another, so we aren't taking so much food car camping. We always come back with so much and we wonder just like, oh, like what did, what did we think we were gonna do? Yeah, so maybe take a few less calories and a few less ingredients when you're car camping. So if we aren't meal planning to a number, then what are some ingredients and maybe some meals that I can pack along that are gonna hit our diversity in our meal plan? So our fat, our fiber, our carbs, our micronutrients, our flavor, our diversity, all those things. Well, I've got a nice list over here. So as far as ingredients go, here's some things that, that I look to, and some of these are just naturally high in calories, which can be helpful for some of you out there. So here are some ingredients that I like to pack along macadamia nuts, cheese, salami, nut butter. All of those are really tasty, really satisfying, really easy to pack along, and naturally high in calories. I like the Pro Bar meals over most granola bars and most bars out there. They just have the better flavor and they have real ingredients in there, so not just a whole bunch of sawdust. Some other ingredients on our list are chickpea snacks, super filling, avocado, great natural fats, some quinoa, brown rice for that great fiber and nutrients, smoked salmon and smoked fish. If you're a fisherman out there and you're smoking your own fish, man, take that along and invite me because that sounds awesome. Some dried fruit. And also, if you are looking for a quick energy burst, look for those oil packets or coconut oil packets. It might be kind of weird to be like taking a shot of oil, but it is the highest caloric density of 
any of the nutrients out there, any of the macronutrients out there, and it doesn't give you that sugar crash and can keep you going and also kind of maybe keep the pipes moving as well. And as far as a few recipe suggestions that all of you guys can make out there on your portable camp pots, loaded mashed potatoes, pad thai, elevated ramen, beef stew, mango fried rice, bacon cheddar grits, tortilla soup, stroganoff, no cook, no burner grain bowls, chickpea stew, all of these sound super, super interesting, are really diverse in their flavors, in their textures, in their ingredients, but these are just a few. So if you need more ideas, check out our website below. We've got a whole bunch of great recipe options for you. And the last thing that I can share with you today about meal planning is excitement. Yeah, it is exciting and man, really, really awesome to be excited for your dinner or rolling out of your tent in the morning and having something to be excited for rather than the, just the same old stuff. I've had so many of you out there that say, oh man, the last few miles of my trip were, were getting really, really, I was getting really, really tired, but I was really excited that I have beef stew or pad thai waiting for me and it only cooked up in 10 or 15 minutes. And man, it was just so great to have something to keep me going, to pushed me through on the last couple miles. So it's exciting to have really tasty food that you're that you're excited for. And another random note, you know, I mentioned that I am not a nutritionist. I am also not a scientist, but there is something and there is something that's valuable about being hungry. And I know nowadays we are coached to, oh man, keep on snacking. Make sure you have three almonds in your pocket at all times because, oh my goodness, you might be hungry. But I think there is some value into getting somewhat empty. And again, you do you, you know you as far as your energy level on some of these hikes, but I like getting hungry and then eating because there's something I think going on in the brain up here that's, oh man, hey, hey buddy, you're, you're, you're low, you need something. And then you fill it up and there's a great trigger that happens of satisfaction and satiation, especially if the food is really, really good, that I think is valuable. Again, I am no scientist. That's just me and how I like to do things. But I do like to get hungry and then I like to eat because then I am even more excited for it. I will say there is something true about bonking. And, you know, what happens when you bonk is you're just, you're, you're hiking along, you're doing just fine. And then all of a sudden you just, all of your energy goes away. You're a little bit lightheaded. So be mindful of that. And you, you may need a few snacks to help you through that. But again, you do you after you go on a few hikes and after you're, you're, you're doing this, you'll, you'll, you'll find a little bit more of how you eat and how you eat on the trail. But just want to make a note about that because it is a real thing and can be kind of a bummer, you know, bummer bonking. But if you are cooking and eating real meals at every meal or most of your meals, I'm guessing that you're probably going to be bonking less. Well, thanks for coming along for our calorie chat today here in Antelope State Park. Man, I have never been here before, but I am definitely putting it on a list to come back and do some camping. It is really accessible from Salt Lake City, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and man, super, super pretty. But you can cook with real ingredients in order to make some really great, satisfying bowls along the way. And it's my opinion that that will provide some great lasting memories and refuel you in a better way. But if you have any questions, please email me because every trip is so different. Every belly is different. And there is a lot to consider when you are meal planning for any length of trip. But get out there, cook something amazing, somewhere awesome. Boca, boca.